Hello class, Mr. Fino here. This is unit one, lesson one on investigating the past. So in this section, you're going to learn how social scientists interpret the past. Uh, so we'll, we'll get to this, but uh, social scientists are uh, scholars who study human society. And so we're gonna see some of the different types of social scientists like uh, archeologists, anthropologists and historians um, and uh, geographers as well. All right, first we have this question, what is ancient history? So when we think about ancient history, this is the distant past from the earliest humans through the first great civilizations. Um, so, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago, uh, when before humans were, you know, as they are today, this would be ancient history. And then some of the great civilizations like, you know, Greece, Rome, ancient China, ancient India that we're going to study this year, these would all constitute ancient history. Um, so who, who are the experts that learn about the past? These experts that would ask questions and study evidence for, for clues and form hypotheses, which are educated guesses about the past. Who are these experts? Uh, well, in this section, we're, we're looking at three three specific uh, jobs. Archaeologists, historians, and geographers are like detectives who studied the past. And these are all types of social scientists, which I just mentioned. Um, and, you know, just think of them as detectives. They're, it's their job to figure out what, what people were like in the past. So they're going to use the, the clues available to them and... Um, resources available to them to figure that out. Starting with archeologists. Uh, so these are people that examine objects or artifacts that people have left behind. Um, and some examples of such artifacts would be clothing, tools, weapons, and coins. And so you can see a couple pictures here. There's an arrowhead, a uh, picture of some old clothes and um, bow and arrow types of weapons and stuff. Um, but they would ask questions like who lived in this place? When did they live here? What were they like? And they'd study these artifacts for clues about how these people lived. Uh, next we have historians. Uh, so these are people that record or write down what happened in the past. Um, usually historians look at artifacts and read documents left behind. Uh, documents such as uh, diaries and letters. Um, so yeah, th think of historians as that they're directly doing doing writing, they're writing down stuff that they're learning about the past. Um, and uh, for 1000s of years, we've been leaving behind written records. So historians would study those, they'd study those records, and then they'd write down, you know, in books and, and articles and papers, their thoughts on those things. Um, but yeah, they're trying to understand why events happen the way they, all right. The next group that we're looking at, the next, uh, job would be, uh, geographers. And so, uh, geographers are people that study the natural features of the earth, such as water, landforms, plants, and animals. Uh, but they also look at human made features like towns, bridges, and, and dams. So, you know, they would study a lot of the things you see in this picture on the left, right, mountains, whatever sort of plain this is, maybe it's some sort of foothills. Uh, but then also they look at, you know, things created by, by man, right? So one example, interesting example that I can think of is like a ghost town, right? Which is uh, towns that are abandoned and left behind. Um, so a geographer could go there and, you know, look around and, examine it to kind of figure out how these people lived and maybe try to figure out why they left. Those would be some of the things they would deal with. Um, yeah, so they'd ask questions like, where did people live? How did they use their environment to survive? Um, they'd, they'd probably work with maps and stuff. And uh, yeah, that's geographers. Uh, next, we have this question of why is studying prehistory such a big challenge? So Prehistory is the time before written history. 
So this would make it challenging to, to learn about people. If we don't, you know, if historians don't have uh, writing to look at from people that, that were, were in the past, it makes it very difficult to learn about how they lived. So um, it's a lack of evidence, right? Um, and in fact, huge gaps of time have no evidence at all. So we got to look at uh, other ways of trying to figure out how people lived. And that's where that's leading us into this next, uh, this next topic, which is uh, cave art. Uh, so cave art has been discovered all around the world and show the animals early humans hunted and hints at how they survived. Um, early humans use torches and animal fat lamps deep in caves. So some of the, some of these, ca uh, some of this cave art being discovered is, is deep, deep in caves. So you had to figure out how would they have seen what they were doing? Well, they, they would need light of some si some kind. So that's where torches and, and animal fat lamps would, would have come in. And then to paint up high on, on, on these cave walls, they may have used some kind of scaffolding. So you can see here on the, on the top left, this would be a more modern uh, scaffold. It looks a little bit weird, but um, they would have been very simple scaffolds that early humans would have used to reach high, reach up high uh, to, um, to paint on the walls. Um, uh, what did early humans paint? So uh, they often drew very simple people often hunting with spears. Uh, so like you can see in this middle picture, they're pretty much stick figures. I mean, they didn't put a lot of detail into the people they were drawing. And perhaps they were performing a ritual, planning for a hunt or drawing an event. So some of the potential reasons they would have um, drawn people. Uh, they drew detailed animals, often using the uneven walls of caves for the composition of their art. So um, like if there is a like you can see here on the bottom left, there's kind of a ledge. They kind of use that uh, as a detail in the, in the art. Sometimes if, you know, there are certain bends or, or lines, they would have kind of integrated that into, into an animal. Uh, and for this, perhaps they were trying to capture magical powers of animals or connecting with the spirit world. A couple of potential reasons they would have drawn and painted animals. Uh, they also drew shapes and handprints, which may have been early signatures which is an interesting um, theory that perhaps, you know, a handprint could have been used as a signature or maybe there was, you know, uh, shapes and patterns that represented things. Uh, what other forms of art did early humans create? Uh, they would create fancy spear throwers, which could release the weapon faster than throwing. So it's kind of hard to imagine this thing on the left, but you'd put the spear um, in it and it would, you know, be able to increase the velocity of the of the spear, which could have you know do more damage when hitting an animal. Uh, and they would mold detailed clay sculptures of animals. Uh, these may have been used to represent clans or for important ceremonies. So potentially, these sculptures of animals could have represented you know a clan. They might have maybe there was a a, a bear clan or a horse clan. Uh, what materials did early humans use to paint? Uh, so they used engraving tools, grinding stones, and scrapers. Those are the things they would have used to kind of work on on the walls and, and the paint. Uh, for paint, they combine a stone powder with animal fat or oil, and that's how they would have gotten their different colors and stuff. Um, that's why a, this is bacon, which is, you know, releases a lot of animal fat. That's why I have the picture of that. Uh, and then for brushes, they use moss, fur, or human hair. Uh, so in conclusion on this section, uh, this, here's a summary. In this lesson, we learned how different social scientists investigate the past and the importance of cave art in studying prehistory. All right. Thank you for listening.